Today we're talking about the best strategy to set up your base on defense to prevent the three star. What is up my friends, my name is Echo and today we're back in Clash of Clans looking at some ESL war hits from Mutiny Elite and Van Clan, some defensive tactics that they're using in their wars that are preventing the three star and some of these are so close. It's those 99% two star attacks that you really don't want to get in war but with base designs, sometimes it happens. Before we go any further in this video, I want to remind you guys that this video is sponsored by ESL and AT&T. And remember guys, make sure you sub the channel and ring the bell for Daily Clash of Clans videos. So the first attack we're looking at today is done by Damage Inc. out of Mutiny Elite. And you guys can see the composition right here. We have the Quad Quake going in, the 13 Yeti, 2 Ice Golem. Basically, it's one of those unhealed Yeti smash attacks. And in this base, we're going to give you a little sneak peek right now, guys. This right here is the key to preventing the three. These Island Inferno Tower compartments end attacks at high percentage two stars way too often. So what does that tell you? It tells that you should be building your bases that way to prevent a three star in your wars as well. You want to have a compartment with the Inferno Tunnel dead in the center and notice the compartments around. You have this compartment we have over here. These are all keeping the queen from being able to shoot over that wall to get the inferno tower but let's take a look at the attack first and see where things went wrong and i'll tell you guys this is going to be a 99 percent two star coming in with all of the yeti spread out across the back side of the base and the siege barracks coming in right in with those yeti so not using any bit of funneling stuff for the outside just going right on in with the rest of the kill squad the quad quake is going to be coming in really soon we have a jump spell right there as everything approaches allowing for the troops to hop right on in beautiful i love the early warden ability keeping everything safe from the eagle from the dragons allowing all of the troops to maintain their life early on in the attack but notice how everything paths around this compartment they're not pathing toward it they're pathing away from it especially because of that quad quake opening thing opening everything up into the core of the base towards that queen and that scatter shot. They're running on through. The attack is looking great so far. I mean, there's a lot left, a lot of troops, a lot of wizards following behind that P.E.K.K.A. as well because, well, they came out of that siege barrack. And the hog riders are pathing around, getting some great value. No more spells. We have a queen's ability, a champion's ability, and a bunch of wizards left in the attack. And they're going to be going in and taking out this inferno tower. The walls opened up. It was quad quaked open. It's all looking good right now. Hogs are getting a little bit more value before they finally go down. Royal Champion's ability yet to be used, but that's going to change very soon. You have a lot of defenses right here in this compartment, and it would be uh, beneficial for that champion to take out a few of them now, wouldn't it? There's their ability, popping through, taking out multiple defenses, or actually beating up on multiple defenses, not actually taking them out. When you look at the rest of the base, there's really not a lot left. 55 seconds. Look at the number of troops coming behind. The Grand Warden's there. He's clutch for shooting over the wall, taking out stuff, but the Queen is not alive. The Grand Warden does have the reach to reach over the walls and to get this Inferno Tower, but remember, the Warden is going to attack where the troops are attacking. He's a support character. He doesn't go solo on his own. Not most of the time. Now, the Kill Squad is looking pretty good. The King is still up. A Peck is still up. We have a Yeti spawning those Yetimites, helping to take out some of the defenses. The Expo goes down, and uh, what do we have left? Oh, well, what, what do you guess, guys? We have this solo compartment. Now, the Warden is right there, but he's being struck by the Inferno Tower Beam, and he's going to help support the King, the Wizards, or the other troops. Now, right here, guys, we're down to 98%. The Warden is getting the air defense. The Warden goes down, and from afar, the Inferno Tower in this compartment is going to save the day, ending up in a 99% two-star because... This may be the best type of compartment you can build in your base at multiple Town Hall levels, not only at Town Hall 13. In this second example, we have Godfather from Mutant Elite coming in on this base with a very similar strategy, although the attack this time does have those healers. But notice there are a few compartments with Inferno Towers around the base, one of which is going to stop this attack dead in its tracks i want you guys right now to guess in the comment section below which one it is and as we're recording live we got goat man subscribing 
over on Twitch. If you guys want to come through my daily Twitch live streams, the schedule is right here. It's also linked in the description of this video so you guys can come through and hang out with me playing some Clash of Clans every day. Goat, thanks for the sub. Now let's get into this attack, hitting the play button and seeing where Godfather decides to go in on the attack. Starting out with a Warden Walk up north. I mean, you can hear it. Sometimes you don't see it up in the corner. Warden walks take a lot of patience, okay? You really have to take your time, let the Warden take out a bunch of the defenses before you rush everything in. So this is more like a classic P.E.K.K.A. smash, utilizing a lot more Yeti, a lot less P.E.K.K.A., but the same Warden walk that we've been seeing with the P.E.K.K.A. smash in the phase one of the attack. The P.E.K.K.A. is going to come on in, the Siege Barracks, so there's going to be two P.E.K.K.A.s, there's going to be a bunch of Wizards behind, and then all the Yeti. There are two Jump Spells, three Rage Spells, a Heal, and a Poison in the comp. And, uh, well, the Yeti are going to town. They have the Healers, they have the Warden, and, well, tons of support is there. I love the Wizards behind coming from the Siege Barracks as well, and not needing the Earthquake Spell, because the Town Hall compartment, it's just open. It's open right there. Poison Spell on top of that... Lava Hound, which is great. The Lava Hound is going to slow things down for a little bit, but for right now, it's uh, it's not doing too much. Ice Golem pops and freezes everything in the core. The Hog Riders and the Champion are storming the base right now as the Siege Barracks goes down. And we do have a bunch of pups that are really kind of ruining things for the attack. This is why Lava Hounds are really good in the Clan Castle, guys. These pups right now are beating up on our troops, beating up on our healers. Now the Hog Riders are on top of that Eagle Artillery, that's clutch because we want that Eagle down ASAP. We don't want the fire from above raining down on our troops. The Queen walked around the base, didn't go in the center, which is probably why there was a little bit of trouble with that uh, Lava Hound. But, lots going on. We have the Queen's ability, a Balloon, three Wizards, and a lot of troops left in the attack. We have the Royal Champion on the Inferno Tower. Now a Hog Rider on the Inferno, getting a shot. The Inferno is down to two-thirds health. The Grand Warden again supporting these troops rather than shooting the Infernal Tower. That's just what he does in the game. He's not going to go attack solo. He's not going to YOLO. But we got the Balloon coming in getting a great defensive, uh, offensive strike on the Mortar. Worked out really well. The Yetis are being struck. They're going to spawn their Yetimites, which should jump over the wall. Queen's being melted a little bit, but it is a multi-target Inferno against a max level Queen. So, so far she's looking alright. Problem is... She's got to get through, through some wall to get to that Inferno Tower, and that is what's not going to happen, especially with the Skeleton Spells, or the Skeleton Traps, I should say, slowing her down. If she had her ability intact, possibly she would have made it through, but she got struck by the Giant Bomb. Inferno Tower takes her down, ending this one. After those Wizards are done, we're going to be ending in a 97% because of another Inferno Tower compartment. You have the air defense, the multi-inferno, and the uh, royal champion pedestal left over in this compartment, preventing the triple. So, if you've learned something from this video, mess around with compartmentalized inferno towers set on multi. We've seen it kill attacks from time to time, or I should say, not from time to time, time and time again, resulting in high percentage two stars, which for the defender is a win. So I showed you a bunch of defensive strategies. Let's take a look at something on the offense that's doing really well in Clash of Clans right now at Town Hall 13. And basically we have a Yeti smash. Lots of Yeti attacks going on over here in, in uh, Mutiny Elite. Quantum Enigma on this attack, opening up the entire core of the base, doing a little bit of funneling with those Yeti right into that Tesla farm. Now the cool thing about the ESL is that you don't scout bases. Each attacker of the five gets one attack. You don't know where traps are. You don't know what's in the clan castle. You kind of have to go in on your attack and figure it out and adapt as the attack goes on. Now, if you don't know much about the ESL or if you've never visited their website, I am going to be linking their site first thing in the description of this video so you guys can check it out, see what's going on. Season 4 has been awesome so far. And today we're getting a little bit to see from Mutiny Elite and Van Clan as well. Some defensive and offensive greatness. Town Hall's down, worked out really well. Grand Warden's ability was used, and that just keeps everything invincible, allowing them to pass through more efficiently. Now, for me, I like to use the Grand Warden's ability nice and early on the attack, right as the Eagle's going to be raining down, right as they're in the Inferno Towers, just to try and keep as many of my troops alive as possible. I feel the sooner you use it in the attack, the more troops you're affecting. If you wait too long, you're affecting, you're, you're helping less troops. So it seems to just work out nicely to get them done and get them used, get it used when 
all the troops are together. I guess there's times that that's not the case. Like when you're going over a Gigabomb and everything dies. But for me, I like to play it safe. Make everything invincible for a few seconds as they enter the base. Got a couple of wizards cleaning up down here. Really great to have some wizards for cleanup in the attack. The Yeti are looking strong right now, trying to get through the walls. Royal Champion's doing some great stuff as well. The Queen is going through the center of the base, joining the hero party. Healer's still up, and that's the key. On offense, in my opinion, the key is to have healers keep keeping your troops alive, maintaining their health. There's no more defenses left, guys. The Queen's abilities pop just to clean some stuff up. Royal Champion's attacking everything. Grand Warden just following around. He's being a follower right now, going after whatever that Yeti's going to attack. And we are going to pull in a three-star just about as we get through this final compartment. Now, were there Inferno compartments in this base? I don't know. Maybe my editor can take a picture of it right there and take a look. So let's take a look at the other side of the war where Moi from Von Clan goes after Quantum Enigma, who pulled in a three-star on the other side of the war, I believe. Baby Dragon starting the funnel, and now on this side of the war, we saw a lot from Van Clan coming in with the hog minor attacks and you know it's another very strong meta attack strategy right now for town hall 13. i don't know i i guess it depends on the clan it's really funny how different clans focus on different attack strategies now is that scatter shot going to be affecting those healers are they going to be hit with that scatter shots blast looks like they are a little bit far they're looking like they're staying safe scatter shots about to go down healers is safe rage spell used to get the queen through that king little interaction happening right here there we go. Now the queen can move on through. She's going to be able to secure the town hall as well, luring the clan castle, dealing with the ice golem, the witch, and the archers. Those witches are a problem for the queen. She has to make sure that she can get through the, the witch, not just the skeletons. Because how many times have you seen the skeletons overwhelm the queen, completely take her down, and the witch just continues to create? It's like a spawner with legs. Now we got the queen taking down the town hall. That's going to be clutch right there. Securing the one star all while narrowing down the base. Now I do notice this base does have one of those compartments that we were talking about earlier on. Plus dead space in the center. Those can also be a problem. But this queen has been funneled right into that compartment. That could be an issue for the attack. But remember, this attack is hogs and miners. So when you're coming in with hogs and miners, they jump over and dig under walls. So those compartments are a little bit less of an issue if they can live through the the majority of the attack they're pushing on in and this is cool because the queen is going to join up with the hogs with the miners with the warden with the champion the healers are going to be on top of them look at the grand warden's ability being used early getting them through the scatter shot raging everything through this heavy heavy part of the base the queen is still getting huge value with those healers on top she is just uh completely she's probably taking out 30 percent of the base herself on top of the the Eagle Artillery and that Inferno Tower, nice placement of the heal, making sure that the multi-target Inferno does not melt those hogs too much. And with no more spells left, it's going to rely on what's up, which seems to be everything on this attack, as well as the Queen Walk, the King running around the base with the ability intact. I mean, this was a pretty dominant hit right here. So the question is, do you guys think that the Yeti Smash attacks or the Hog Minor attacks are stronger in the meta right now in Clash of Clans? What do you guys think? I'm asking my chat right now on Twitch as well. What do you guys think? Is it the Yeti or is it the Hog Minor combination? What's the strongest way to attack today in Clash? I want to thank Mutiny Elite for having me come over and sharing this war from the ESL with me to bring it to you guys both on live stream and in a video. There are their details if you want to be part of it. Thank you, Phyllis, for the follow. But we are going to be getting out of here for today. Thank you all so much for coming through. I appreciate each and every one of you. And again, if you have not checked out the ESL website, it is linked down below. And the last thing that I want to tell you guys about is my Instagram. I post pictures and videos every day, guys. And I would love it if you came through and dropped a purple and a blue heart on my latest Instagram picture or video. Go check it out. But we're out of here for the third time. Take care, guys. And be good.